are putting up wallpaper for my office makeover for the One Room Challenge. I picked a wallpaper that is non-woven, which basically means that it's not pre-pasted. So there's no adhesive on the back of the wallpaper. You actually roll on the adhesive directly to the wall, and then you put the wallpaper onto the wall. There's no dipping, there's no book ending, there's no waiting around for it to activate the paste on the paper, none of that. I'm really excited, this is my first time using the traditional non-woven wallpaper, and from what I hear, it's a lot easier than you think, so I'm excited to get it done and show you guys the whole process. So the wallpaper I chose is Birds of Paradise Pink Lady by Milton and King. It's such a pretty pattern, I love the floral, whimsical design of it. You can kind of see here behind me, I have it all laid out and ready to go. I'm so excited to show you guys the finished wall. Living in Texas, we have textured walls, which is not good for wallpaper. I did a skin coat on the wall that's getting wallpaper first. You can call it floating the wall. Basically, you're just smoothing out the texture on your wall if you have those textured walls. If you want to check that out, it's a really simple process. It's very detailed, but once you kind of get the hang of it, it's not as hard as I was thinking it was going to be. So this is the wall that I did the skim coat on. You can see on the edges, this is still the texture. I'm putting in built-in cabinets are going to go right here but it kind of gives you a visual of seeing what the smooth feels like and looks like versus the texture. And I'll zoom out so you can see more of the details. So the wallpaper will be all the places where I did that skim coat to make the textured wall smooth. And this will be like the desk area. So we stopped, we didn't go all the way down to the floor, which made it easy for my first time not having to worry about going up to the walls on the sides or going down to the baseboards. But the wall is completely smooth after doing that skim coat. If there was any rough edges, I just went over with a sander block and smoothed out any rough patches that I saw. These are the items that you will need to install your unpasted or non-woven wallpaper. I have it laid out here as prep supplies and then your install supplies. I also have all of these items with links listed below in the video notes. The most helpful thing is to grab a friend because it's a lot easier to install wallpaper with at least two people. Thanks to my friend Christina for coming over and helping me install this wallpaper. We are ready to go. So the first thing that you will want to do installing wallpaper is getting all of your measurements right and making your cut. This can be a little bit more tricky if you have windows or doorways on the wall you're installing wallpaper. So I wanted to make sure on my first install of wallpaper that I had a solid wall. The only tricky part was some of the cuts that we made, we didn't go all the way to the ground. I was trying to make sure that I had enough wallpaper. Um, so that made it a little bit more difficult not using the entire roll and having to look at the repeats and the links of the wallpaper and making sure that all of that lined up correctly. Once you're ready to make that first panel of wallpaper installed on your wall. This is probably the most important piece of paneling that you will put on. Once the first paneling goes on, that is what you will line up every other panel up against. And so you want to really make sure that this first panel that you're installing is hung completely straight and in the correct position. So what we did is we used a level to make sure that the first paneling was straight and we used a pencil to mark down the wall and as I was hanging the first panel, I made sure that the wallpaper was lined up to the marking on the wall, that it was completely straight. Another tip for when you are making your cuts, you'll want to leave at least an inch or two on the top and bottom of your wallpaper panel. 
so that whenever you're done, you can make a sharp cut with one of your craft knives and you have a little bit of excess left over on the panel to make that cut from. When you're applying the adhesive to the wall, you can use a paint roller or a paintbrush. I found it easy to use a paint roller on most of the panels and then at the edges and seams I would sometimes use a paintbrush just to make sure that I got those creases and seams really tight and glued to the wall. Also on this first long panel that we installed I used the roller to apply the adhesive all the way down the wall in one roll and then the second long panel we realized that the wallpaper would stick a little bit easier if we just rolled on the adhesive to the very top and we smoothed out the top. And then as we went and smoothed out that second panel, we would go under and we would apply the adhesive in two or three segments for each panel. This really helped get the wallpaper to really stick and be glued to the wall if we did it in segments instead of doing the whole panel at once. This really helped smooth the wallpaper and making sure the seams were all lined up. And it also helped to make sure the glue was still st sticky and tacky and it hadn't dried out before we had gotten the wallpaper to the wall. There's two ways that you can smooth out the wallpaper and get out those bubbles and creases. You can use what's called a seam roller to really get the seams straight and get all those bubbles out. I was just using a smaller foam paint roller to do that. And then there's also a plastic smoother and this really helps get out the creases. You gotta be kind of gentle whenever you're using it to make sure that it doesn't scratch the actual paper. Both the smoother utensil and the roller helped get a real crisp, smooth, finished look to the wallpaper and get out all of those bubbles and creases that would sometimes come up whenever we were hanging the wallpaper to the wall. Another tip that I would give is sometimes we were having a little bit of an issue with the seams to stick to the panels. We would go back and with a paintbrush, we would dip the paintbrush in the adhesive and we would go down the seam and brush some of that adhesive along the seam line and then smooth it out to really make sure that those seams were sticking together and they were lining up straight. You might notice that on these second and third long panels, we're actually hanging them lower than the area that I had done the skim coat smoothing out of the wall. And that is because whenever we first drew out the cabinets and desk that we were gonna install along this back wall, we weren't gonna have an opening to see through the bottom part of the desk. And we realized whenever we were doing our measurements and cutting the wallpaper that we actually have two spots where we're gonna see the wall underneath. We didn't want though that area to not have the wallpaper and so I made a little bit of a mistake whenever I was doing the skim coat and smoothing out the wall. I should have gone all the way down at least on the spots where the open desk area is going to be but it was kind of a learning process doing this for the first time and if I was to go back and do this again I probably would have done a skim coat on the entire wall and then so I could hang the wallpaper on the entire wall and not have to make these jagged cuts and make it a little bit easier for my first time to hang the wallpaper all the way down and do long panels all the way down on the wall. As we were going along, we would start learning different tricks that seemed to be working better than others. And one thing that we noticed was not only was it helpful to roll on the adhesive with the roller brush, but also going down the seams beforehand with the paintbrush with the adhesive really helped getting those seams to really stick together. And even after we would smooth down the seams, we would even go over the brush on top of the wallpaper to really make sure that each panel was sticking together and there weren't any 
bubbles or openings where the panel wasn't sticking on the wall. There were lots of things that we were learning as we were going along the process since we were doing this for our first time. And once we started getting the hang of it, we really felt like we had gotten the process down and it was much easier than we thought it would be. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming home projects.